Hey guys, Chris Dick here. Um, today we're going to continue on with our uh, discussion on migrations. Uh, in the last video, um, I was working on adding our uh, game genre, games and genre uh, tables into our migrations. Now, the thing is that with the assumption that uh, with the migrations that we did last time, uh, it was the assumption that um, Entity Framework created our uh, ASP.NET um, identity tables for us. And of course, you know, what we're doing in this migration here is really simple. It just says, it's, it just says, okay, we've already got the migration tables set up or the, uh, the identity tables set up, so add these ones. Now, um, there are some challenges in that uh, and uh, a lot of times when you set up migrations um, you're setting it up in a project that's already running but uh, we are going to keep moving uh, on with this and uh, what we're going to work on first excuse me is now we're going to add in uh, some new models and uh, and uh, we're going to start to make some connections to the uh, ASP.NET user. So what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be adding a rating system onto our uh, onto our uh, our game manager. Okay, and in the game manager, it's pretty straightforward for uh, for ratings. We just have a rating that is based on a user. And um, so let's see here. We're going to call this a rating is the object name and obviously what's going to come out of it of course is a table name ratings all right so we'll just wait for visual studio to catch up with me here okay so our first property that we're going to add in this is um, it's going to be our usual GUID that we're, we've been using so we're going to call this a rating ID Okay, and if you recall from the discussion on uh, data annotations, this thing's getting a little bit weird here. There we go. We have a key notation that we're going to add, and we just hover over that and simply uh, click on the light bulb and uh, click on using annotations. Now, I'm going to steal some code from our other stuff here because uh, just for brevity, so I'm going to copy over our database generated information. We'll place it right in here. You'll see it's going to ask us uh, to add the uh, uh, system.component model.annotations.schema this time. If you saw here, we were data annotations, now we're dot schema. schema. Um, the other features that we'll copy over, because we have these same things in uh, all of our models, is we add the create and edit date options. And you notice that all I'm doing is just copying them from one to another, okay? <clears throat> all right, now um, rating uh, also has a property of a user ID. User ID is a string, okay? And we have a virtual property of the net, which is the navigation property, um, and it is an application user. Okay, this application user comes from the identity models, and we're going to call it users. Uh, we have to, we also have to add the virtual keyword. And um, as with all of our identity properties, we have to identify what they are. And I'm going to again, I'm going to steal some code from over here. I'm going to grab uh, a little bit of this. Okay, so what we know about our user ID is that it's a string length of 128. I'm going to call the display name as user. All right, it is also a required field. Okay, and I'm going to steal something from game genres, and that is simply our foreign key over here. And there we have it. This, as I've said before, this foreign key is related to this user ID in this case. And I like to try to keep these little, uh, these little parts together um, because, you know, inevitably we, we can, uh, we, you know, we can copy the pattern to the next thing. And that is that with a rating uh, object, 
we now have a game ID that we're also um, working with. Okay, so we know that as well. That's an ID, and that is a 128, right? Because it's uh, the foreign key is a game ID, which is 128 as well. It's also required. Our display is going to be game. All right. Uh, the object name is going to be game. The model that we use is quite simply game. And then we make sure that our foreign key is related to game ID. Okay. So this so far is is all we need for our uh, uh, our rating system to work. Okay. At this point. All right. Now the next thing that we have to do is we have to add in um, some code too, and let me just see. We are going to add in. Uh, I'm going to copy some code over from game, the game object, and I'm going to go into the identity models file. Whoops, my mouse gets a little crazy sometimes. There we go. And we're going to go into the application user object. Okay. So pasting that code over here, uh, again, these uh, features are not added, so we add them in just to add the using statements. We're going to add in uh, our inverse property again, and in this case, because I copied stuff over, you see there's lots of little errors, but they're nothing complicated to get rid of. Now, in the application user, okay, you remember we just added a foreign key property of user, okay? right here so that means it's related to application user the rate rating is application user related okay so our inverse property is user okay the display is ratings okay we're going to call the object ratings as well and it is a collection of rating objects right so very very simple it looks more confusing than it actually is so um, try not to try not to get uh, um, too complicated with it. Now, we have a pattern here that we've created. So all we have to do, and if you call game now has uh, a potential have, of having many ratings. So we go over to our game object or game model and our, we change our inverse property to game. Okay, because once again, on application user, it's called the, the inverse property is called user. In this case, the inverse property is called game. Okay, so now we've got those two set up. If you see here, this is the code we just added. All right, excellent. Okay, now um, we also have some changes to do to our data context. Okay, now these will be very important for uh, adding uh, adding to our um, uh, our, our, uh, our migrations, okay? So with Model Builder, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our identity and we're going to call this rating, okay? Because that's what we called it, all right? And rating has, has a required, uh, let's see, E, and it doesn't, again, it, I'm using E here, but uh, that's just because it's the default. There's no real reason to use E. You can use anything you like. And then it says, with many, okay? And um, as always, you know, uh, if, you, if you have a one-to-many relationship, it should be already there. And let's, uh, let's go ahead and make this a cascade on delete. So in other words, if I delete the user, okay, it should cascade in and delete all of the other, all of the other things, okay. And now I'm going to do uh, the same for game. All I'm doing here, is, as you, as you can see, because of what I did nicely, I've named things correctly, and all I did was change one thing, and there we have it. Okay, we've got everything changed. Okay, now. We're going to, I'm going to do a migration here that is going to create um, some results that are unfavorable, but I want to show you what happens when we do, because this is a very common thing to do. Everybody sort of thinks, oh, it's up and running, and I should be able to just run and go for it, right? <clears throat> so let's just go into our, uh, um, where are we, package manager console, 
And you know, once we're uh, once we've got this up and running, we can then um, run the migration. So here we're going to do an add migration, okay? And I'm going to call this add ratings, okay? So add ratings here is going to add is going to create a ratings table, okay? It is going to uh, also want to create an application user table but if you recall from our um, from our database the application user call table is actually called ASP net user so I'm going to show you uh, a few things here I'm going to show you how to uh, remove a migration and I'm also going to um, show you how to make those changes so there's a couple things that it complains about here all right the first thing that it complains about is that what it's trying to do here is it's trying to uh, link to the identity models, okay? And we don't need to do anything with the identity models. In fact, we can totally ignore the majority of the identity models. So we're going to do this, all right? I'm going to copy that name, okay? It's only identifying two, but I'm actually going to... Um, remove a couple of them and if you see here it's uh, got a render underline and that's just because we haven't added identity framework to our using statements cut copy that paste that over and one more copy okay so the, I, I like to delete it like to remove all three of those things because they're just not necessary for what we want to try to do Okay, so we're going to try to run that again. Okay, and it's good to see what uh, what happens during this these uh, these um, these migrations to understand how to deal with the errors because they are really common errors, and believe me, they're really confusing to deal with because to look at that, it's like, what does that mean? It doesn't say. I don't really understand what to deal with that. So how would I how would I fix that problem? Okay, so hopefully this video helps in that respect. Now, here we have our table for creating our ratings. Okay, that's cool. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, however, we are missing our defaults and we'll add them later on. But what you'll notice here is we have this foreign key related to application users. It goes off and says, hey, I got to create an application users table, but we don't need it. It doesn't, doesn't, it's not useful for us because uh, our application users are actually related to ASP.NET users, okay? So in order to back out our, uh, our migration, we just have to delete the migration, okay? Now, if a migration has already been run, that's when it can be complicated. Okay, um, we have to uh, we have to set up you know what's the uh, what's the relationships again, and, and then we have to delete a migration history. In other words, if we if we have a migration that hasn't been run, then it's okay. But it, once it's been run, that it gets uh, added to the migration history, so it gets a little more complicated to back it out. All right. So how do we fix this problem with the, the naming? Okay, so what we uh, what we do is we do this. We go application user, okay, and dot to table, okay. ASP net users, all right, and that's pretty much all you have to do. Now, if we if we run our migration again, okay, I'm just I'm just going down into the package manager console and I click on the up arrow. And uh, that brings me to my last thing. If I, you know, go up, go up more. I've only got one thing in there, but if I had more things that I had run, I could see a history of what I've done. So I'll press Enter now. And what that's going to do is generate my code for migrations. And uh, from that point, um, you'll see, and you can see directly here from my uh, ASP Net users that it adds a foreign key. Okay, sets the cascade delete to true. So in other words, if I delete a uh, user, it will also delete the um, it will also delete the ratings for that user. Now, the confusing things for everybody is that is that well, hey, if uh, if migrations created a a table create thing, then I should keep it. Well, you don't. 
So we copy that out. And that's why you do a little bit of edit. You, you know, not everything that is created is perfect. Okay. And as we've seen before, um, it's more likely not to be perfect. So we have some co some code that we've generated before, okay, and we've we've looked at our default SQL, okay. So I'm going to go over to any one of these tables here and just ask for the uh, default SQL, and we're going to do that, add that in, okay, and I'm just going to copy over the create and edit dates as well, because they can uh, they can easily be subbed in, okay. And that's pretty much how we add an, a ratings table. Uh, we see everything is set up and ready to go, right? If I go down to the package manager console now and I'd run update database, uh, we will run that and we'll see what happens here. Okay, so our update database function ran without any hitches. If I go over to my SQL Manager Studio, you see now I have a ratings table. If I right click that and uh, script the table to uh, create to, uh, now I should see what I'm asking for up here. I should see a perfect representation of my, uh, my ratings table the way I want it to be. We'll just give uh, SQL Studio a second here. Uh, so if you recall, I have two foreign keys, a user and a game. Uh, and then I have some constraints in my uh, create and edit date, and I should have a default for rating ID. I see my default for rating ID, two constraints added for, um, for uh, create and edit dates, and I also see my foreign key for users. Um, take note that it is uh, pointing to the right direction as well. This is something that we will cover in another uh, video later on because uh, sometimes as, uh, you know, uh, because the names are different, sometimes it doesn't quite pick it up and we'll deal with that too. Now we also have our constraints for our games, which is also another important feature. All right. Excellent. Okay, so that's it for this video. This is a little shorter than usual, and I appreciate your time. Um, we will catch you in the next uh, video where we start um, looking at, uh, you know, adding in our uh, models where we're really not, uh, where, where we, we've already got a fully ap operational ap application. And we've decided, hey, I'm going to add in uh, code first migrations. So, Remember to like and share, guys. Please subscribe. It helps me a lot. Um, and I look forward to, to uh, teaching you some more stuff in the next video. Thanks a lot. Take care. Bye.